That performance isn't going to keep any of the gymnasts off the Olympic podium. But neutralizing antibodies can keep the coronavirus from getting into cells. So let's talk about how this, what these are, how this works, and how we can test for them. So the spike protein sticks off of the virus and binds to the cells and allows the virus to get into the cells. Um, so it binds to the cells through this receptor called ACE2. So on the spike protein, you have the stalk and then you have this head part. And this head part has this up, down, up, down part called the um, RBD, receptor binding domain, that actually binds to ACE2. So the idea is that if you have an antibody that binds to that place, it can prevent ACE2 from binding and then prevent the virus from getting into the cells. But how do you get these antibodies? So either through vaccination or through infection. Um, and so with, or you can also do this thing called monoclonal antibodies where you basically give someone antibodies that are already pre-made. Um, but then the person can't make more of their own because they don't, they haven't like learned to make them. They, you've just given them some. So, but what exactly are these antibodies? So antibodies are actually these little proteins. Um, so they have, this is a type that you'll commonly see, it's IgG. Um, so all antibodies have like a generic receptor part. So this constant region, and then this variable region. Um, so the parts on the tips. So it's like you have so you have this like constant region and then you have a variable region where something can stick off. And so this variable region, like the name suggests, is variable. So different parts can be put on it. And some of these are sticky for different things. So this might not stick for my, my finger, but it might stick for this pen. And the trick of immunity is the body having to find which um, which antibodies will bind specifically to something that's foreign, but not to something that's self. Um, and so how this happens is this like trial and error process. So basically you have these immune cells called B cells and the genetic instructions for making antibodies. So antibodies are like a pro are proteins. And so like all proteins, the genetic instructions are written in the form of genes, which are in DNA. Then an RNA copy, a messenger RNA copy of that DNA gets made, and then that copy gets used to make the protein, as instructions for making the protein. But these B cells are kind of special because so normally your DNA like doesn't change at all, or it shouldn't change because then you can get things like cancer. And so those type of mut mutations you don't want. But in these immune cells, they can undergo this cool process called um, somatic um, mutation. So basically they have this gene that has like all the different instructions for all these different regions that I can put onto that generic adapter. But when they, each cell can only choose one of them. And once they choose, that's it. They can't choose again. So they have to make this initial choice and well, I say choice, but it's a random choice. So different cells will choose differently. So say that one cell decides it wants to be this blue or it randomly chooses to make edit it, its DNA so it's this blue one. Now it's always going to make this blue one. And so this antibody is going to make this. And so it's actually like there's, for IgG, there's like two uh, variable regions for the one constant region, which is why you have like this Y-shaped thing. And this helps because then you get this thing called avidity where you can like bind multiple times and then that can help it stick. But okay, so the basic idea is that you have different antibodies that have made different choices. And so now a virus comes along. So say this, so the virus comes along, doesn't stick to this one, but it does stick to this one. Now this one's going to get selected for as long as it doesn't also stick to like the body's own proteins. Cause if it sticks to the body's own proteins, then it gets trashed because, or it should, or else you get like things like autoimmune disorders. So it has to recognize non-self, but not self. So then it sticks. Then this was like, oh yay. Okay, this is a good one. So it undergoes the selection process where then you get this thing called clonal expansion. So basically the initial cell, there's clones of it made. So more and more copies of this cell are made. And these cells have the instructions for making this antibody. Um, and so this is really great because now you get more of that antibody. And 
um, you have like memory B cells, which actually like have the memory to make more if you encounter that again. And you also keep like a low level of circulating antibodies. So this variable region is what's actually going to bind to the antibody. So it can bind to any part of like anything. And so the thing that it binds to, we call it the antigen. So in this case, it would be the spike protein. Um, the specific region on the spike protein in which it binds is called the epitope. Um, so antibodies don't just have to be made against proteins, they can be bound against anything. And so you can think of it kind of like where's Waldo. So you can have antibodies bind to different parts of Waldo and those different parts are the epitopes. So all of these antibodies are recognizing Waldo, but they're recognizing different parts of Waldo. So they're hats, they'd be like a hat epitope, an elbow epitope, and a foot epitope. This matters because not all of these, even though all these antibodies will bind to Waldo, and that's we say they like recognize him, they don't all, they might not all have like the same effect. So say we want to Waldo from walking, okay? But if we block, if we block his elbow, we're not gonna keep him from walking. But if we block his foot, now he can't walk. We put like a barrier, we glue his shoe down or something. We, he can't walk. So this would be like a neutralizing antibody. It blocks the virus from getting in and or replicating. And so normally the way that neutralizing viruses do this is they bind in the same spot that ACE2 normally binds. So when ACE2 can't bind, then the cells um, can't, the virus can't get into the cells because it can't dock on because ACE2 is blocking it and the antibody's like, hey, um, or no, then the antibody's blocking ACE2 from binding. It's like, hey, I got here first. So um, just a quick note. So I've showed you these Y-shaped antibodies. These are IgG. There's also other like a very re constant region adapters. So I had my finger like this and then I had like the um, various um, variable regions on top, but you can also have like different adapters. Whoops, I didn't mean to flip you off there. Um, but you can have different variable adapters. And so like IgM, for example, is made earlier in an infection and it actually has like, it's, um, firms these like pentamers. So there's like five copies of this antibody and this adds for like added avidity. Um, so more like teamwork kind of, um, but typically the antibodies are like weaker at the beginning and then they have, they like, so they, after that original like somatic mutation or whatever that chooses which um, like variable region the cell makes, it can actually undergo hypermutation. So the very, it evolves more. So it's better adapted to bind. So you get stronger binding and then um, it switches the adapter to like this IgG and I'm not an immunologist. So hopefully I got that right. And that's just like the total basics um, way overlooking a lot of different um, stuff. But the basic idea is, so we talked about neutralizing antibodies and non-neutralizing antibodies. And so how do you find these? So the typical way that antibodies are tested for is with something called ELISA. And ELISA is just going to tell you about binding. So basically how it works is you take a blood sample and then you can take either the plasma, which has is without the cells, or the serum, which is without the cells and the clotting factors. Um, and you take that and then you can see if it binds to the antigen. So in this case, the spike um, is like plated on the bottom of a plate. If there are antibodies in that sample, they'll bind. Then you have to be able to detect it. So now here's where that constant region comes in. So the constant region is kind of like the boring region for most things um, because we're care like most people are focused on like that variable region um, because that's the part that makes these unique. But we can, as biochemists, we're like, hey, this constant region is this great thing, like it, because they all have it, so that we can test for these antibodies. So because only the antibodies that can bind will be stuck to the plate after you wash it, then you can use another antibody that binds to the generic part and is also labeled. And so often this is done with like um, a horseradish peroxidase label, which changes color um, when you introduce this reaction thing. Um, so more about that when I talk about like Western blots and stuff. But that doesn't tell you about neutralization. So the like gold standard for neutralization is this thing called a plaque um, reduction neutralization test. So basically you take blood, um, blood or blood serum or whatever, and you heat kill any virus that's in it. And then you add it to, um, you add it to plated cells 
and then you add virus and you see if the virus can get into the cells. So if the virus gets into the cells, it, it grows um, and makes these like things called plaques. So you get these like dotty things. Um, and so the more neutralizing antibodies there are, the fewer plaques there are going to be. And so you, to make this um, like quantitative or whatever, like to see how, like how much antibodies there are, you make this like dilution series. So the more neutralization, the more, neutralizing antibodies there were originally, the more you can dilute it and still have um, still have no plaques. The fewer antibodies there are, the more, when you have really dilute, you'll, um, you'll I mean, even when you have not very dilute, you'll have a lot of plaques. Um, but the problem with this is that it's more difficult to do and you have to work with the live virus. So another um, way is this like pseudovirus neutralization test. So here, you, a pseudovirus, so it's like this virus that's expresses the spike protein um so it makes that spike protein on its surface um like sticking out from its surface like the coronavirus does but it's not harmful and so it's easier to work with um you need less safety precautions and that sort of things in addition to making spike this virus also has instructions for making a glowing protein um which will serve as a reporter and so if this virus can infect cells those cells will start making that glowing protein and you'll be able to see it if there are neutralizing antibodies, then that, um, that pseudovirus, so that virus can't get into the cells, so those cells won't start making that glowing thing, and so you won't see glowing things. Um, and so it's this, you can do the same sort of thing where you do a dilution series and see um, how dilute you can get it um, before you start seeing the glowing. Um, and so the more dilute you can get it without seeing glowing, the more neutralizing antibodies were there because those antibodies were preventing the virus from getting in to the cells and thus the cells from making the protein. So a lot of times, um, most talking about antibodies and stuff focuses on the immunity stuff, um, but you don't hear that much about the actual testing biochemistry and that sort of thing. Um, so I hope that helps give you some insight into that side of the process because that's kind of like the things that fascinates me um, and I like to address things that don't get covered as much but that are really fascinating too um, well at least for me and so hopefully hopefully for you and if not you're probably not still you're probably still yeah you're probably not still listening um, so if you were thanks for watching um, you can find figures text and more on my blog the bumbling biochemist.com um, and have a great day.